We are now live. Uh, this is going to be a quick, happy Sunday morning power of call. Sundays are wonderful days. Sundays are one of the days, are, are the one day really, truly, that I, I try and invest some time and energy into my family, right? I, I'm here. I do my morning power. I answer all the questions. I, I'll go around to the chats. It's not like I'm completely absent on Sundays. I'm still here quite a bit. In fact, I do everything I can to help you guys be accelerate your path as quickly as towards success as possible on a Sunday. However, I do take some time to sit back with my family, smile with my sons for at least like an hour or two on a Sunday. So uh, Sundays are, are good days for me. Um, they're also days when a lot of the big ideas I have for improving the campus come along. A lot of the ideas, the big breakthroughs I have will actually oddly be in those moments of complete disconnect from the campus, which again, I take some time on Sunday to go to church, be with my family. And it's fun how that triggers the bigger inspiration for, for the campus. But aside from that, let's let's talk about what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about what's going to happen on this morning power up call. We'll talk about some announcements, some updates for the campus. And I'm going to then share this. And again, I said it in the little tease that I did for this call. These these questions that we're about to ask and, and these perspectives that we're going to talk about today, they're the closest things to a cheat code that I have found on this planet. Right. I don't really believe in the idea of cheat codes, but. This principle that I share can give you a massive advantage in the world. It can give your writing a massive advantage and it can give your, your ability to manage your own mind. It gives you a massive advantage in that realm as well. But we'll get to that in a second. So as far as announcements go, if you are out of the boot camp and into the chaos week uh, place where we used to have legions and now we have these sort of different chats, um, you've probably seen this AI challenge. We did one before where I had you guys find some unique ways to leverage AI systems to improve your current work process, which was really cool. You guys came up with some fun stuff. Um, it's been fantastic to, to see those submissions. However, we also have, and, and the winner of that, I still need to get in touch with him, but once we get that set up, I'm going to do a one-on-one -on -one call with him. The We're doing a follow-up challenge. So the do the end date is Tuesday, which is like the end of chaos week, technically. Uh, and, and the challenge is to use AI to build an actual info product or actual product software tool or whatever it is that could be used in a different industry. So not, not for copywriters, but for people out there in the world who are dealing with stuff, an actual product that can, can help them solve, the, solve their problem, which is a cool, cool challenge. A, yeah, you're going to learn how to use AI and that's going to be cool. You're going to learn how to like put together products and stuff, but it's also going to help you think about creating value, right? You're going to learn to look at a market, look at their pains, Look at their problems, look at their desires and their frustrations, and then think about how you can create a, a virtual or an actual resource for them that can help them solve that problem. It's massive and awesome. So it's going to be fun. So Chaos Week has been fun. Uh, and, and I'm excited to see the submissions as you guys do this. It's a big challenge. It's a lot like the AI funnel build that I, that I did for you guys. It's inside of the general resources under video mini trainings. But um I'm excited to see the the fruits of this one because I think, sure, you guys are going to build cool things. And yeah, some of you are going to get paid as a result. It's going to be a product you're going to sell and you're going to make some money at it. It's going to be cool. Like that's going to be fun. But really the lessons that you guys are going to learn about thinking about value and product and, and, and aligning people, a market's needs with a resource to help them solve that, overcome a roadblock, it's going to be pretty cool. I'm excited for that one. So let's talk about this cheat code. Let's talk about this. And no, the cheat code, I saw someone in the chat said the cheat code is ChatGPT. No, this is not ChatGPT. ChatGPT is an accelerant. It's a, it's a cool tool, but everyone has it, all right? It's not a cheat code. What I'm talking about, going to be talking about today is something that very few people have. This is something that very few people have. But the funny thing is, it's something that everyone could have. It's, it's there for the taking, but so few people are, are even aware of this, of this idea or or fail to truly understand how transformative it is. Now, I'm going to tell the story of why I'm talking about this. Uh, there was a, a call I was doing, I think it was a copy review call with some students. I think it was the John Carlton ad, and we were talking about, um, about this quote I heard from Elon Musk that was, that kind of gave a, an inside peek into how he thinks and, and specifically how he manages his time and how he chooses what projects to work on and what that really means for, for, for Elon top E. Right. And it reminded me of this principle that, and, and how he's using it as well as how everyone, how I use it, how everyone I know who's successful uses this principle. And 
And I've really thought about how important it would be to share with you guys. So that's, that's why we're here. So I actually went and dug up this clip that I had remembered this time when I heard Elon Musk talk about this idea and I dug it up and we're going to share it here in a second. I've got it set up to share. We're going to, we're going to go over that in a second, but um, let's, let's talk about this, this superpower, right? So many people live ordinary, boring lives, absolutely ordinary, boring lives where they don't really do anything spectacular. Their, their life has very little purpose and has very little meaning. It is just, uh, you know, they eat, they live, they work, they consume, and that is it. That's all they do. That's their life. And if they do have a job and they want to make more money, they try and figure out how to just like, you know, make more money so they can have more money to do more stuff, have more stuff so they can, you know, consume more and, you know, maybe eat a better, eat at a different restaurant or go on a trip to wherever. Like that's how they live their life. That's their entire focus is just like work, consume, dine. And for many of us, like that's that's how we were brought up without any malice from our, our family. Probably it's just kind of how we grew up. It's the world we lived in. Work, consume, die. That was it. That was the cycle. There is a there's a way to break free of that. But a lot of people, when they first think, OK, you need to break free of the matrix. You need to break free of this work, consume, die thing. They think they just need to, like, find a way to massively earn more money. And that's how it's magically going to help them escape. But honestly, there's a shift that has to occur in order to truly break free of that cycle. Because if you just earn more money, chances are you'll just continue through the consume cycle, right? You see a lot of guys that do this, right? They go into finance or whatever, and they make a ton of money on Wall Street, let's say. Let's say they do a hedge fund, make a bunch of money, and then all they do is just go on vacations and it's hedonistic partying and they're just doing drugs and, you know, partying on some yacht. And that is literally all they do. And they have nothing, nothing beyond that. The problem is they're still in that work, consume, die cycle, and, and they have very little influence in their world. Like they might have some money and they might be able to enjoy nice things, but they don't have any, any significant influence over others or over the world in, in any real shape or form. The superpower is finding something that is important and creating importance around what you do. So beyond just making money, is what you do important? Is the project you are working on, is it important? And when I say important, like, does it, does it actually make a difference for you or does it actually make a difference for others? If you find projects that are important and work on projects that are important, it is significantly easier for you to be persuasive in your writing. Now, let's, let's, back, let's, let's connect this back to Elon, right? So Elon, when he was like a little autistic or Asperger kid, whatever you call it, right? The guy's awesome, right? Like, he's just this little kid in college, right? Kid from South Africa. You know, it wasn't Elon Musk at that point. He was just regular Elon Musk at that point. He sat down and thought, what are some of the biggest, most important projects I could do that could impact humanity? That was the question he asked himself. And he's like, oh, electric cars would be pretty cool. Going to Mars would be pretty important. Uh, this, this, that. He thought about things that he could do to actually physically, like actually impact the future of humanity. Now, that's a powerful question. Right? And he came up with his own answers. You might agree or disagree with some of those answers. It doesn't really matter. That question itself is really cool. What could I do that would impact humanity? And then he did everything, everything outside of that, like the, for the rest of his life. You know, the thing he did at PayPal or, you know, his first Internet company and then at PayPal and all that stuff was he tried to design something that would have a positive impact on the world, a major positive impact on the world. He tried to create money with PayPal or X.com back in the day. He tried to create a uh, a massive online finance. He, he tried to digitize the financial markets, right? He tried to basically do what crypto is today. That's what he did. He sat down and built that with the, the co-founders of PayPal. Crazy, right? Then he turned around and immediately went into Tesla, went into SpaceX, and he doubled down on projects that were extremely important and extremely, had, that were designed to have an inherent massive impact, or at least at some point down the road to have a massive impact on the world. And this gave him some major advantages, right? Elon Musk, like SpaceX, Tesla, those are some of the biggest companies that the graduating engineering students like fight to like tooth and nail to get a job at when they leave college. He attracts the top of the top talent easily because of how important his work is because he has such a grand vision for the future. He's able to inspire people to, and he combines that with good things, right? Like the design, for, let's talk about like for Tesla, for example, right? Like sure. That's theoretically supposed to help the environment. Maybe it doesn't really theoretically it does, right? He's got some cool design. It doesn't look, the cars don't look terrible. They just look like, electric cars, but they have, like, he's, he's, he uses those persuasion elements. If you watch Elon talk, he's using copywriting hands down. Like you can see it. The guys, people pretend like he's not very good with people, but he's extremely good with people, extremely persuasive, but it's amplified because of this background, massive, important cause that he's, he's championing, right? This massive 
wonderful future for humanity that he's trying to give to, to everybody else. It magnifies his ability to persuade. Same thing with SpaceX, same thing with like all of the projects he do, they, all of the projects that he does, OpenAI, for example, it all has a massive level of importance, right? It's not just getting more people to, you know, buy his product. It, there's, a, there's a level of importance which gives, gives the, the actual product and the marketing of the product a, a, like, a, like a steroid shot. Now I've done this myself, right? Like obviously I'm not helping people go to Mars, but with the projects I've worked on as a copywriter, I've always either chosen project products that had a massive positive impact on humans and doubled down on that mission that the founder had to help help the world or help the people in his audience. And I've doubled down on that, or I have found an important cause to champion with that pro product that I felt would help the world or at least help that audience in a deep way. And I've doubled down on that important the importance of that. When you do that, it gives your writing more power. It gives you an ability to, to transfer a stronger and more inspiring belief to them. If you truly believe and have found a way, like a, either found the meaning that is inherent in the product itself or attached powerful meaning to that product to make it important. If it is viewed as important in your mind, it's viewed as important in the mind of your guru, it can be viewed as important to the prospect or to the actual reader and they will be more likely to be persuaded and to purchase and to change their life, right? If you give them a cause bigger than themselves, they're more likely to make, make changes and move towards a better future. It gives your writing an ability to make a much higher impact compared to someone who doesn't truly seek out any level, great level of purpose or importance in their work, right? So really quickly, that's a, that's a quick glimpse into this idea. If you can look at what you're doing in life, Look at what your projects are. And this applies to everything besides writing. But if you look specifically at like the prospects you work with, the clients you work with, the people you're reaching out to, the way you reach out to them, if you can double down on the importance of what's being done, you can find the important part, the part that has a significant con like consequences for the world or for other people in their audience. If you can focus on that part of the, the project or the product or the brand or whatever, it gives you superpower when it comes time to persuade, right? Because... It's it's a massive sum of energy compared to just playing around with, you know, help just buy this product so I can make more money. The why behind it, you know, does this even matter? That question, why does this matter? If you can find a good answer for that, why does this matter now? That gives you a massive lever that you can use to to move the world. You can you can change the world, you can change entire markets that way. So keep that in mind. Let's talk about how it helps with time management. And I'm actually gonna play the clip. It's funny when I was going through to find this, you know, I was searching through different interviews and I was using control F and I, you know, would control F the transcript and look for um, the word important. Elon Musk used the word, uses the word important a lot. He very carefully chooses to spend his time and energy on things that are actually truly massively important. So let's watch, let's watch part of this video clip. Now this is Elon. He's on with uh, Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan's asking him about like, why he doesn't own a home anymore because Elon Musk doesn't really own a big home. He just kind of moves around different places. And um, he's asking him like, you know, well, why did you just like go to cool Tony Stark house, you know, with cool gadgets and stuff like that. And, you know, and then Elon gives his answer here and it's very indicative. It shows how his mind works around this particular superpower, this cheat code, um, which you see all great people, all truly great people that move the world use this, right? All truly successful influencers use this idea. Elon's just one, one of many. Right. But this is a very clear example of how this principle helps him live his life more effectively and be more effective. So we're going to watch the clip and then we'll talk about it. So here we go. Do I really want, does it really make sense for me to spend time designing and building a house? And I'd be real, you know, get a, like OCD on the little details and the design. And, or should I be allocating that time to getting us to Mars? Uh, I should probably do the latter. <laughs> So, you know, like what's more important, Mars or a house? I like Mars. Okay. okay, so really quickly, he's like, do I do I go and design this cool house or do I allocate all that time I would spend to, to just making my house all cool to helping humans get to Mars, which is more important, uh, helping people go to Mars. So he was able to discard something that would provide very little value to his life and to the world because he has this massive, insane ambitious goal that can help him move forward like he that he cares about way more that's way more important to him and to those he cares about and the entire world right now if you can find and attribute meaning to the valuable work you need to do to improve your life and improve the world if you look at yourself and say okay 
you know, yeah, I need to make more money, but I need to make more money because, and you can find a good reason on that back end, right? Because I want to retire my mother, because I want to provide for my, have a family and provide well for them, because I want to be personally independent and be able to control my own thinking because I'm not manipulated through like financial neediness, right? Or I want to be strong and powerful so that I can be, so it, so I can show it favorably in the eyes of God. Whatever your why is, if you can attach a massive importance to the positive work you do, I need to go to the gym because, and you can attach a massive importance, it defeats all the little things that the outside world or the matrix or whatever you call it will throw at you, right? Which is more important? scrolling through Instagram or building my financial independence so I can retire my mother. So she doesn't have to work as a dishwasher anymore, for example. Right. When you have those two, this importance always defeats the importance of the little tiny distractions in your life. Right. When I was a kid, we used to play this game with M&Ms where we take two M&Ms, you know, we take a red M&M and a blue M&M. We put them together and you'd smush them together and see which one defeated the other one. Right. So that the blue M&M like stayed together while the red M&M got crushed and that blue M&M was the new champion. And you do it as a big giant tournament. I remember doing this. It was like a goofy little game we play as kids. But it's that's basically what's happening here. If you have a massive and powerful why, an important meaning, you're doing important work because it has a massive impact on you and on the rest of the world and those you care about. That why is so powerful. It can defeat all the tiny little distractions. It's the, it's the stronger in the M&M. When you put that up against the, the temptation to sit around and play video games, it destroys it every single time because it's so powerful, right? If you find yourself distracted, if you find it you're, it hard to do the work, if you find it hard to uh, to study or, or, or improve your writing skills or what, whatever you know you should be doing that is difficult, I want you to spend 30 seconds. That's all it truly takes. 30 seconds, 60 seconds. And think of the why. Focus on the importance of the work you're doing, what impact it's going to have on your life and the life of those you care about and your bigger vision for the future. I truly sink your teeth into that and then use that why to defeat all the lesser whys that could distract you on different paths. They're going to take you to know where you want to go. This is how you break free of the cycle, right? You find and you make greater purpose, right? You create greater purpose in your life. You find projects that matter, and you double down on those. It gives you a power when it comes time to persuade, when it comes time to influence, when it comes time to attract the important or correct people into your life. It gives you a, a super advantage on that. And it also helps you destroy all the temptations, all the distractions that would distract you or take you down a path you don't want to go down. This is, um, this is a step you guys want to think about. You guys can't see the clip? No way. You guys, one second. Can you see it now? Can you see the clip? Let's play it again. Can you guys see this? That's really funny. Okay, I'm gonna make sure we guys get, you guys get to see the clip because I think that's uh, I think it's important. <laughs> I think it's important. So tell me, can you guys see the screen? You guys can see the screen. Okay, we're gonna play it now. We're gonna play. We're gonna play the clip. You should be able to see it. For sure. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Okay. Um. But but then I was like, man. <laughs> Do I really want? Does it really make sense for me to spend time designing and building a house? And I'd be real, you know, get a, like OCD on the little details and the design. And or should I be allocating that time to getting us to Mars? Uh, I should probably do the latter. <laughs> so, you know, like what's more important, Mars or a house? I like Mars. Okay. So there we go. Should we? You guys probably got to see it now. So you got to see him talk about it, right? That's the example, right? What's more important, a house or Mars? Mars, right? Use that idea. Use your find. You need to go find your why. Like, sure, you, maybe you guys can all go get obsessed about going to Mars and go like try and work for Elon Musk if you want to. That's sure. That, if you want to live his vision of the future, that's fine. Cool, no problem with that. But you guys all need to take some time. No matter what you're doing, you need to find the importance behind it. There's always a thread of importance. Find the why. Find how it impacts you. Find how it impacts the people you care about. Find out how it impacts the future and creates a future where you want to live in a, a cause or an idea or a, a change that, that's more important than just yourself. If you can find that, it gives you a superpower to not only influence others more effectively, like what we talked about inside of your actual writing, but it also gives you an ability to manage your own time and destroy lesser paths or lesser temptations that come up. So use that. Guys, it's been good. I will definitely put the, uh, the link for this inside of the description of this so you guys can see this it's been a good call it's been good to talk with you guys i will talk with you guys again on our next power up call
Glad you guys were able to see the clip. Finally, like I always say, there's only one Mr. Producer. I am not him. We were able to give the content to you guys like you needed. So good call. I'll talk to you guys again tomorrow. Use this information. Go find a powerful, important why.